Good evening. My name is Victoria Jeffries and I am the Regional Admissions Representative for Johnson & Wales University and I'm the facilitator for your information session this afternoon or this evening. Becca will be telling you about Columbia College of Art and Design. Even though your camera and your microphone is turned off, you are still able to communicate through the Q&A feature. If you miss a slide or some information, don't panic because the session is being recorded and it will be available on our website, inacac.org under the virtual college exploration tab within a week. And then there are more sessions that are coming up. So go on the website, see if there's another school that you wanna learn about or listen in on. And then I do encourage you to sign up. Once Becca is finished, I will pop back on because I have a, another closing slide to show you. But right now I will turn it over and enjoy learning about CCAD. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Let me get the screen share going. Hi, my name is Becca Thomas and I'm an admissions team lead at Columbus College of Art and Design in Columbus, Ohio. So I'm here to chat with y'all today a little bit about what CCAD has to offer, some of the majors um, that you can choose here, what career paths those could lead to, um, as well as uh, what to do next if you're interested in applying. So hopefully you find this info helpful today and we can always set up another time to chat if you have follow-up questions. Um, and just to give kind of a brief overview of what admissions counselors do, like myself, we're here to help with every step of the way. So our application for fall 2021 is opening up uh, hopefully in the next couple of days. And once that happens, I'm here to answer portfolio questions to figure out about your financial aid options. Uh, if you do get accepted, I'm here to help you determine whether CCAD is the place that you wanna be next fall um, and every little thing in between. So don't hesitate to connect with us on an individual level. We are friendly, helpful, I think for the most part uh, as a team and we're here to help you. So without further ado, um, if you do see anything today that interests you, feel free to scan this code on the screen using your phone camera. Um, we'll also receive your information if you pre-registered for the session today, but this is the quickest way to connect with us um, if you would like to receive more info or especially if you wanna be contacted when our application is live. And I'll show this QR code again at the end of the presentation. So if you miss it now, hang tight uh, and it'll be at the very end as well. So some quick facts about CCAD. We are one of the oldest art and design schools in the country. We are located right in downtown Columbus, Ohio. Um, and the cool thing about being 141 years old is that we have a really big alumni network that's excited to engage with you on a personal level. We also have a lot of deep ties to the Columbus arts community and beyond. So we've been at this art school thing for quite a while and we wanna help you find your own creative career as well. Uh, we're also on the small side, so about 1,100 students. It's actually pretty average size for an art school, but I think you'll find that if you like one-on-one -on -one attention from your faculty, if you like getting to know your classmates on a really deep level, then you're gonna like that size. It's about 15 students per class and about a nine to one student to faculty ratio. And even though we're a small school in central Ohio, we do attract students from all over the country and the world, about 37 different states and 22 different countries represented in our student body. So we hope that you could find a place amongst our student body as well. We offer 11 different majors in the art and design realm, everything from animation to fashion design, illustration, advertising and graphic design. If it's a creative option, we probably offer it here. Um, and so I know a lot of you might take art classes at high school, uh, you might be a self-taught artist who keeps a sketchbook every day. You might just be an art fan uh, and you might not know where you fit in within these majors. So these next couple of slides are gonna break down the majors uh, in terms of what you would do and what you would create to hopefully help you get a better sense for what might be the right one for you. 
So ultimately within your art practice, it's important to just think about what do you want to create every single day? And it might be something that you're already doing in your classes or something you got to experiment with at a pre-college program, or it might be something you've never even done before. And that's okay. We welcome students at all different levels and backgrounds. But if you find yourself really drawn to narrative and world building, if you like to do character design and you've got a sketchbook of stories and characters that you've had with you for years, then you might be interested in one of these four majors. Animation is our most popular major here at CCAD. Uh, comics and narrative practice also has a lot of close ties with our illustration department. And then game art and design is our newest major at CCAD. And you'll find a common thread between all of these is really that narrative storytelling component. So whether you're working in sequential art, like the photo in the middle, uh, or if you want to try your hand at 3D illustration or 3D modeling, um, you can get the opportunity to experiment with those things in our world-class facilities. We have a brand new animation center that has a stop motion lab with 14 individual stop motion stations. So it's basically a station just for you with a DSLR camera, lighting equipment, specifically dedicated to bringing your project to life. We've got Cintiq Labs, which are giant uh, touchscreen computers for animators and illustrators. Um, and we've got a whole hallway filled up with um, movies that alumni have worked on, everything from Mulan to Cars to Tangled, Toy Story 3, and everything in between. So if your interest is in storytelling, definitely check out one of these majors. You might find a career path that feels very traditional. So maybe you want to work in an advertising agency doing animation, or you become a children's book illustrator, or how awesome would it be to work at Pixar? We have alumni doing all of those things, but you'll also find that our alum work at places like NASA, Lego. Uh, we have a couple of alum that work here in Columbus for an agency called Little Seed that creates virtual reality experiences for Nationwide Children's Hospital. So you might think of these traditional pathways in some ways, but you'll start to find through your classes that your creative skills can be applied to a huge range of careers. Um, Katura Bobo, whose uh, illustration is featured there at the upright um, upper right hand corner, um, got to work with Grace Byers on two different illustrated books, all about empowering young girls and young women to be the best that they can be. So whatever you're passionate about, whether it's social issues, you can find a way to express that through your artwork. And a couple of more student stories to share with you. Uh, Shay Beagle took our Spitball Comics Anthology class twice at CCAD. Um, and the second time Shay took that class, they came up with this idea for a comic called Moonstruck. Um, in Spitball, the class, um, the anthology that they make is called Spitball. That's why it's called Spitball. Um, they get paired up with professional writers to create a five page comic from start to finish. So that's where Moonstruck was born. And then eventually Shay ended up continuing to expand that story and sold it to Image Comics as a multi-part comic series. They just released uh, the third installment earlier this year. And you can check that out at Image Comics online if you wanna purchase it. Um, but Shay was able to take something that they started at CCAD and turn it into a full-time job after they graduated. Uh, Logan Schmidt kind of has a similar story. He's got a really cool wildlife nature aesthetic and knew as an illustrator that he wanted to be a small business owner. And eventually after creating enough uh, free band posters for bands that would come through Columbus, he built up enough of a network that he now freelances full time. He's done band posters for Van Morrison, Ray LaMontagne, Dave Matthews Band, just to name a few. So if you're interested in potentially owning your own business or freelancing after you graduate from CCAD, definitely recommend taking a business minor. We offer eight different business classes at CCAD to teach you everything from how much to charge for your work, how to write a contract, who owns your work once it's been handed over to the client, and all the important things in between. 
So our next grouping is really geared at students who want to create anything from products to spaces, things with unique messaging that have a really global impact. So if you like the idea of actually seeing your work out in the world as a full on experience that you can walk through, that you can wear, that you can touch, then one of these majors might be the right fit for you. Interior architecture and design uh, is gonna be anything involving spaces. And it is so much more than just the decor, the pillows, the wall colors. It's really about how you interact with the space and how it can best uh, be created for the people that are using it. Uh, industrial design is gonna be any type of product design from toys to cars, to furniture, lighting, pretty much anything that can be bought and sold that's a tangible product um, would fall under our industrial design major. And then fashion design, like it might sound, is gonna teach you everything you need to know to create your own garments from start to finish. So all the sketching, the drafting, if you wanna make your own custom fabrics, we have a dye lab and a fabric printer on our campus. And then students work their way up to creating their own senior um, capstone show, which is three to six pieces. That could be a mix of menswear and womenswear, like you see in the middle um, photo. We've had students do children's wear, costumes, wedding dresses. By the time you're a senior, you'll really have a, hopefully have a good idea of the industry that you wanna be in after you graduate and you can create work that is based around that. And then last but not least, advertising and graphic design. Those students do so much more than just logos and branding. They're doing fashion illustrations. They're working in web and app design, even user interface and user experience design. You might end up majoring in that and becoming a photographer or a copywriter. Um, they get to learn pretty much every part of the advertising and graphic design realm and then pick a specialty um, that is based around that uh, again by the time they reach their senior year. And you might be getting the hang of this, a couple more different careers that you maybe have never even thought of within these majors. We have alum that work for the Columbus Crew, our major league soccer organization here in Columbus. We have many small business owners, everything from sustainable vegan handbags, um, to aerospace engineers at the Air Force. Again, you're gonna learn creative skills in your classes that'll prepare you for all of these things and more. And what I love about these majors is that the problem solving you learn in the classes and the sketching that you'll be able to do, the ideation, the um, collaborative classwork, you could end up uh, like one of our alum working for Little Tykes designing toy cars like in the bottom right hand corner. And then eventually this is Chris Walters an alum ended up working for Ford Fusion uh, for Ford as a lead designer for the Ford Fusion. So from toy cars to real cars, there is a common thread amongst all of the creative skills that it takes to do those things. Um, so our goal is that we prepare you for a wide variety of careers. And then a couple more student stories to talk about. Susanna Madrid uh, was a graduate of our fashion design major and ended up moving to Italy after graduation to pursue a graduate degree. And while there, got the opportunity to intern in uh, for a company that created shoes and ultimately fell in love with the process uh, of making handmade, beautiful individualized shoes. Now um, Susanna has her own luxury shoe line that embodies that Italian artistry that she learned um, in grad school. You can buy her shoes at SusannaMadrid.com, um, at a department store in Paris, as well as right in our backyard in Columbus at Thread Boutique. So that's a great Instagram follow if you like fancy, fun, beautiful shoes. Uh, and then Audrey Seaman on the right hand side is a great example of how your involvement at CCAD can help build you up for success. So Audrey was the president of the AdGraph Student Collective. That's the Advertising and Graphic Design Student Collective. Um, every major has its own collective, and that's an opportunity for students to get to know other 
students from all levels in their major. They bring in alumni speakers. They do extra events and competitions. They go to conventions and they also just hang out and have fun together. Um, so Audrey was the president of the AdGraph Collective, submitted her work to tons of competitions while she was a student and won a lot of local awards through the American Advertising Federation, the Columbus Society of Communicating Arts, and eventually went on to become a lead designer for Olive, which is a Columbus healthcare and technology company um, that is really focused on AI and how it can have an impact in the healthcare industry. So really groundbreaking stuff happening right in our backyard. And last but not least, if you see yourself doing maybe what is more traditionally thought of as fine arts, if you want to explore different mediums and styles, all while becoming a cultural influencer, then one of these three majors might be right for you. The great thing about Columbus is that we have a really active arts community, um, not just on our campus, but beyond. The Short North Arts District is only a mile away or so from our campus and hosts um, maybe 20 different galleries. They have a gallery hop every month where you can peek in all of the different gallery spaces. And that leads to a lot of great internships, shadowing opportunities and full-time jobs for our students. Um, but even just on our campus, we have four different gallery spaces where students can exhibit their work. We've got a hundred seat screening room for our film and video students to show off their projects. Um, and we've got a gallery dedicated just specifically to our photography students as well. And don't be scared if you don't have uh, an amazing camera or lighting equipment or sound equipment of your own. We also have equipment checkouts where after you take a couple prerequisites, you can check out equipment to use in our studio or out in the real world. Um, so our goal is that you come in maybe you have your own camera or maybe you're just shooting on your iPhone, whatever technology you have, and then we'll teach you how to use the big fancy expensive equipment um, so that when it's time to move on to your next step, you'll know what you're doing and you can uh, take your skills into a variety of different careers based around uh, whichever industry you would like to be in. So a lot of our fine arts students, uh, we kind of talked about owning your own business. A lot of our fine arts students go down that route. Actually, the earrings that I have on tonight are made by Casey Lynn uh, Designs, who has her own jewelry line. We have alum that own t-shirt businesses, one of the biggest uh, kind of cool plant shops in Columbus is owned. Yes, plants, plants are the new pets, I think, uh, is owned by Columbus uh, College of Art and Design alums. Um, another cool story to talk about is Angelo Thomas, who created his own film, feature length film, as a part of his senior capstone project based around a novel that he wrote himself. Um, got to premiere that at Gateway Film Center here in Columbus and now streams um, online. So if you're a film student, definitely check out Angelo. Um, but we want to create an opportunity for you to explore whatever thing you might be interested in um, at CCAD. And one last student story to share with you. Uh, a lot of the photography students I meet with are interested in photojournalism, and that can be a really great career path to go down if you're interested in storytelling and kind of carving out different stories amongst this giant world. So Jessica um, works for the Newark Advocate here in central Ohio and one of her biggest stories last year followed a family um, from Iraq that was resettled in Ohio after the father was working as a translator for the U.S. military and so the photos you see here are really meant to capture what it's like for a family I mean really anyone out of town adjusting to a new place um, and that's a really powerful story that a lot of people can uh, kind of connect with and so this project helped her win the newspaper photographer of the year award by the pictures of the year international uh, competition and her work was even featured in the new york times so another great instagram follow if you are interested in photography so i know i've been talking a lot about careers and you might think okay that sounds great but how do i get those careers so don't worry you are not on your own we have a ton of support services on our campus to help you build that bridge to the next step the biggest one would be the Career Services Office. 
They do one-on-one -on -one career counseling, which can be helpful even if you don't know exactly what kind of career you wanna go into, or maybe you have a couple that you're kind of juggling between. They can help you build a roadmap for what you need to do over your four years at CCAD to reach that goal. They also update our CCAD job board, which has all different types of creative careers, and you get access to that even after you graduate from CCAD. They also host an internship and job fair every year, in addition to bringing recruiters from Pixar, Abercrombie & Fitch, Under Armour, Fisher Price, uh, and many more directly to our campus or virtually to meet with our students for networking events, interviews, presentations about what their businesses do. We also oftentimes bring students up to places like American Greetings in Cleveland just to kind of see what their office space is like and learn about different opportunities. Lastly, Career Services works with our community and corporate uh, partnerships department to bring real world projects into our classes. Just within the last year, we did 24 different projects with 28 different classes and over 300 students participated in various projects alongside companies like Airstream. They make the big shiny tin trailers that are really cool. Uh, Cardinal Health, which is a healthcare company based out of Columbus. Madison USA, which is a fashion brand here in Columbus. Um, they did everything from redesigning furniture to telling veterans stories through animation and film, reimagining what an operating room would look like uh, in a hospital to be more effective. Um, they even developed branding for an academy in Somalia. So those projects saw students working with real world clients from ideation and planning all the way through to conception and production. Um, and a lot of times these can lead to internships and full-time jobs as well. So as many opportunities as you can find here at CCD, we want you to take advantage of those. And another thing we get asked a lot is, okay, I want to go into art, but are there actually jobs? Or are you just painting this beautiful picture? Well, I'm happy to report um, every year we do a survey of our graduates um, and report those numbers back. So of our 2018 grads, 84% reported back that they were employed within a year of graduating. And of that, 78% said their first job after graduating was related to their career goals. And oftentimes this uh, success comes through internships. So about half of our students reported that they completed at least one internship at CCAD. And 30% of those students said they received a job offer from that internship. So I'm not going to say it doesn't come without hard work, but if you take advantage of the support services on our campus, get to know your faculty really well and their connections, hopefully you can join um, the ranks of these successful students after you graduate. And these are just a handful of the places that our alumni are working as we speak. I know it's a really long list, but maybe you'll catch your eye on a couple that uh, sound familiar or even ones that you've never heard of that you want to look up later. Everything from architecture firms to film and television studios, uh, whether you want to work in greeting cards or Fisher Price, we've got alumni working at those places who, again, really want to connect with you and help you join their teams. Um, and as we kind of wrap up, I'll just talk a little bit about our campus. So we do have a traditional campus feel, even though we're located right downtown. But if you've never been to Columbus before, it's a really approachable, safe uh, kind of city of neighborhoods. So we're located in the Discovery District, which is just east of downtown, right next to the Columbus Museum of Art. We've got this big art sign that you can kind of see in the right uh, bottom right hand photo that is at the center of our campus and everything is within two to three blocks in terms of uh, on campus buildings. So most of our incoming students do live on campus in Schottenstein Residence Hall, which you can kind of see in an interior shot in the bottom left hand corner. Um, but we also have an upperclassman residence hall uh, in the lower right hand corner um, that is apartment style. So it's totally up to you after your first year if you want to live on campus or move into an off campus apartment or house with your friends. 
but we do find that in your first year living on campus really helps you build a community. Um, we've also got great offices like our learning support office, academic advising office. Um, we've got a counseling and wellness center right on our campus where students get free counseling sessions. Um, we want to do anything we can to help support you emotionally and mentally, as well as artistically while you're at CCAD. And if there's any resources that you're curious about or that I haven't mentioned, please do post a question in the Q&A or reach out to us after. So if you're a senior and you're watching this um, or a transfer student and you've heard anything that sounds exciting, the next step would be to apply to CCAD. So this uh, page kind of lists our main application requirements. We are a little bit different than um, maybe some more traditional universities in that we require a portfolio to apply. Um, then the last couple slides of this presentation talk about how to put together your best portfolio. Um, but some things to keep in mind are it's eight to 15 pieces submitted digitally it can include literally anything artistic you've done. So even if you want to major in animation, we're not expecting you to have animation in your portfolio, but if you've tried something out, please include that. That would be great to see. But maybe you've actually spent more time painting or you have some character designs that you've created or you've done digital illustration on your iPad. Maybe you've written a screenplay or you're like uh, into poetry. Really anything artistic could be included in your portfolio. And our admissions office is happy to do portfolio reviews for you before you apply. You can set up a counselor appointment on our website at ccad.edu, or you can visit us at a national portfolio day, which are virtual free events, typically from 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays and Sundays through the fall. So just Google National Portfolio Day if you would be interested in attending one of those. So the portfolio is probably what stresses students out the most, but I promise you it's not meant to be stressful. It's just a collection of your work and we wanna learn more about you that way. We also require a short essay, 300 to 500 words. It truly shouldn't take you too long, but it is an opportunity to tell us more about yourself. And there's a couple prompts to choose from. And then we'll also need your transcripts. So that can be official or an unofficial transcript. Maybe your guidance counselor gave you a PDF. You can upload that directly to our application for the review process. And the main deadlines to keep in mind are December 1st. That's our early application deadline. And applying by then will just mean that you get a decision a little bit earlier. We'll be sure to give you a decision before winter break, uh, so mid-December, as long as your application has all the pieces it needs. But the main deadline that I encourage students to embed in their brain is February 1st. That's our priority application deadline. And as long as you submit your application before February 1st, you're automatically considered for all of our merit scholarships. And merit scholarships are really looking at those three parts of your application equally portfolio, essay, and GPA. So all three of those things are super important. Just make sure to submit your app by February 1st. We'll take a look at those items and determine whether you're eligible for a merit-based scholarship. We also offer need-based aid as well through the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. You just do that once and add every school that you're interested in. Um, so please be sure to add us as well uh, if you would like to be considered for state, federal, or institutional grants. And that also makes you eligible for loans, but Financial aid is a whole longer conversation, which again, we can have individually if you have more questions. And last but not least, you can find the application on our website at ccad.edu or through the Common app. I will say our application is hopefully going to be launched this week, um, but if you scan that barcode uh, and give us some of your information, we will email you as soon as it's live. And then the Common app isn't going to be open for another probably two weeks or so, um, but again, we will follow up with you by email as soon as that's ready if you would rather wait and apply through the Common app. So in our last uh, 10 minutes or so here, I do just want to spend a little extra time talking about the portfolio because again, I know this kind of is a stressful point for some students. But as I mentioned before, it's really just a collection of your work. The word portfolio 
sometimes students think it has to be a leather bound book that has all your artwork printed out with captions and descriptions. And sure, that's one type of portfolio. But when we talk about portfolios, it's just eight to 15 pieces uploaded to your online application. Um, it should tell us more about you as an artist. It could include a variety of different mediums and you might not use the same portfolio for every school that you're applying to. We have really broad guidelines. Really the only rule is eight to 15 pieces, but some schools are gonna have a really specific recipe for what they want uh, in a portfolio. So it is important to reach out to those offices, check out their websites uh, to see their requirements more specifically. Um, and a portfolio for us is really important because it helps us get a, a better sense for who you are creatively. It's almost like a cover letter. If you've heard of uh, using a cover letter for a job application, it gives us a better sense for what you've created, what you're interested in, and what's important to you. It should show your passions. It could include in-class work or out-of-class work or a mix of both. Um, but ultimately, go with your gut and pick the pieces that tell us the most about you that we won't be able to find anywhere else um, that you know in your gut, like I did a really good job with that or I got a lot of compliments on that. Um, it is really important to document these things as you create them. Um, oftentimes students do work uh, that they give away as presents. You know, maybe you made a beautiful painting for your aunt and it's now at her house or you submit it to an exhibition and it's never seen from again. So it's important to start collecting all your artwork in one place now. So when it comes to applying to schools, you can just start pulling from your big list of work, uh, whether that's digital or if you save them in a safe, split, a safe space, um, if they're hard copies of work, the earlier you can start documenting things and organizing them, the easier it is gonna be for you to pick your top 10 or 20 uh, and go from there. And again, like I said, it can be class projects, personal work, a sketchbook can be a great resource for artwork as well. Uh, or maybe you took an AP portfolio class and you already created uh, you know, your portfolio project. Whatever it is that you're most excited about, that is what we would like to see. And now when it comes to documenting, um, it's important to let the work shine. So if you did something digitally on your iPad or on your computer, make sure you save it as a high res uh, photo so that you can upload that directly. If it's traditional work, take a clear, clean, high res photo of that. Honestly, iPhone cameras or any type of smartphone cameras are such high quality now. Take it somewhere with natural lighting, lay your artwork down on the ground or on a table and just get directly over top and take a clean photo. We shouldn't be distracted by anything else. So that might mean cropping out edges, maybe something weird is in the background. I'll show some examples of good and bad documentation in the next couple slides. Um, and we do have a page on our website as well that talks about documenting your work. Um, if you put something in a frame, you might want to take it out of that so there's no weird glare. Um, and if you have multiple photos of a project, maybe you did a sculpture that's like 360 and has really cool details on it, take a couple of photos of that and either combine them into a PDF or composite them into one image um, just so we can see it at its best. A couple of good examples of documenting. I know right off the bat what I'm looking at. Um, the jewelry on the left is beautiful color. There's a little bit of shadow, but nothing distracting. It's on a neutral background. Um, the other two are high quality JPEGs or PNGs. There's nothing else distracting you from the work. And I'm ready to just dive in there and get to know these pieces a little bit better as a reviewer. 
Other examples here, if you have something 3D, so something that you actually printed, maybe packaging, uh, or again, like a sculpture, the left-hand side is showing a couple of different angles of that so that every part of it gets to shine. Um, the middle photo would be, you know, advertising, graphic design type thing. Again, it's super clean and easy to read. And then if you have any sketchbook pages or character or style sheets, like the right-hand photo, those could be great to include as well. Um, but clearly this was scanned in on a nice scanner or photographed in a way that the work gets to shine. Now some bad examples. Uh, I can call these bad because I took these photos in my apartment. Um, the photo on the left, like that's one of my favorite prints that I own, but this is not the way to show it off. There's glare, you got my plant in there, the corner of my TV. When I look at this, I'm just distracted. Uh, and not to mention, you can't even see the beauty and the details of this illustration. You can't even see this cool like aquatic dinosaur, which is what it is. Um, so if I were to re-photograph this, I would take it out of the frame. Again, maybe get some natural lighting in my living room and take a clean shot over top of it, crop out the edges, you'd be good to go. Now the middle photo, um, this is a Logan Schmidt original who I talked about earlier. This you might be able to salvage if you just turned it a little bit, straightened it up, cropped out the edges. We don't need to see my shag rug or my people magazines. It's just not necessary. So this one could probably be salvaged. The right hand photo, I would just totally retake. This is also alumni uh, work. This is a cute little pinch pot with my succulent in it, but I can't even tell what this photo is, you know, am I bragging about my succulent? Am I trying to show off this pottery that I wish that I made? It's just distracting. So if I were to re-photograph that, I would do something similar to this jewelry where it's against a neutral background, not harsh lighting. I would definitely take a couple of angles like the photo on the left to really let it shine. So all in all, uh, if you heard anything that interests you today, um, I would love to see any questions in the q and It doesn't look like we have any, um, but if you think of any other questions later, admissions at ccad.edu is a great place to connect with our admissions staff um, or through our website, ccad.edu. We've got a whole tab for the admissions office where you can sign up for admissions events. You can set an appointment with an admissions counselor. You can learn more about our majors and the classes that you could expect to take and pretty much anything you could ever want to know about CCAD. So let me stop my screen share and I'll do my final goodbye. Thank you so much for your time today. I really hope you found some interesting information um, and we really hope to connect with you soon and keep creating and have a great rest of your night. And I'll pass it back off to our uh, presenter. Thank you very much. Um, we appreciate you logging on to watch this information session from CCAD. As I mentioned, the this session is recorded. So if you want to either get someone on to share the information that you saw, or if you missed a slide or a pointer on something, you can go on inacac.org slash virtual college exploration, and you can view this recording within the week. And there are more sessions that we have that are upcoming. So please go on and register for a few more if they are of interest. And when I stop the presentation, there will be a brief survey that we ask that you stay on to take. It's only four questions. And that way it helps us better understand the best means to get information to you. I appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you, Becca, for that wonderful session. And I hope that you all have a great evening. Bye.